we're talking about in this short video is about Columbus Day and Day, Day of Indigenous People. I recommend everyone read Edmund Wilson's book, which is not well known nowadays. Um, E.O. Wilson, uh, not E.O. Wilson of the science guy. This is Edmund Wilson, I think it's Edmund, called Apology to the Iroquois, about our neurosis about the native people who were original inhabitants of this land. And as far as we're concerned, we Euro-Americans and also African-Americans, who, all, even though you were not brought here voluntarily, still we were all latecomers compared to the Native American people. And the Spanish Americans also latecomers compared to the Native American people. And the Native American people today, we see them standing for climate change and for environment and for adapting and stopping our polluting and our destroying, etc. at Standing Rock, where they tried to save the headwaters of the Missouri River and they were flowing into the Mississippi River, the big central vein river of our whole country, the, uh, the real breadbasket of our country, the nurture of the breadbasket, to save that from oil pollution, from these lunatic petroleum libertarian, pseudo-libertarian power maniacs in Standing Rock and being beaten for it and being hit with sound weapons and attack dogs and and all kinds of and legalistic, uh, you know, money things thrown at them and violence, brutality, and and they, yet they are standing up for our nation and for our land and for our country, and they welcomed us initially as brothers. Thanksgiving is an important time to remember that Thanksgiving was to them. They were not just God, but also them were being thanked, the native people, because the early land people who landed at Plymouth, the Europeans. Their lives were saved by the Indians sharing food, teaching them how to hunt turkeys or whatever it is they had to do, plant corn, to survive in the New World, which they weren't doing right away. And they were starving, and they didn't have a harvest. And their lives were saved by the native people. And then a few years later, when they were secure, they started attacking and genociding them, which we did totally. So we're still, we're still doing, in a way. But still the tail end of a genocide is the brutality and the suppression of the movement of Standing Rock and other things, other places. And we Euro-Americans have to, just like we have to face our atrocity of slavery and how we still doing new Jim Crow, mass incarceration of black men and not giving proper education to them and so forth. And we're still doing slavery in another way. When you have a million plus black people in prison have forced to work and make license plates or whatever they do at, at pennies on the dollar wage, that's slavery. And just on, you know, something because they had a drug or they did something or they were so poor, they robbed uh, like a, a, fruit, a vegetable stand or something or a gas station. I mean, come on. And because they weren't educated to have work and jobs and there were no opportunity for them. This is the new, this is still a continuation of the thing with the blacks. We have to face that. But deeper than that, we have to face our genocide of the native people too. Deeper historically in time. I mean, both are equally deep as equally atrocious. We have to face this. We have to honor the indigenous people. They accepted us originally as brothers. They will accept us again as brothers. We, if we become native, we ourselves, to become native, we have to have, make a fair deal and accept a welcome from the original inhabitants. And we have to say thank you for welcoming us here and sharing with us. And therefore, of course, we will share with you fairly and equally. We'll do it. We will not continue to oppress you. We will not let our oligarch, our petroleum, you know, mining petroleum like oligarchs to just continue to persecute you, to rape your land, your, your, your sacred black mountains, your sacred streams, your sacred waters, you, you know, what you have left of the great vast lands that you once roamed free in you know, stolen from you again and again by breaking of treaty after treaty. We acknowledge that. We apologize for that. We, we deeply, deeply, shamefully, you know, ashamedly, we apologize. And we, and we request your forgiveness. And we want you to, we now wish to accept your embrace. And we, would, we, would, we, would, we will take a, the occasional slap for your sadness and fury and despair at how we've behaved. We, we will accept that peacefully.
even. Although we don't want to start, a, we don't want to, you know, not all of us will accept, so we would rather not start anything awful. Another excuse for more oppression. So, so this is what we should think today. We should, we should liberate all these people from their prison. Or maybe the safest and best thing to do is turn all those prisons into universities. Get good faculty. Teach everyone. Also apprenticeships for those who are not wanting to like do like read, read Kant and Hegel or study Buddhism or Confucianism or learn Chinese or Japanese. But maybe some will. We should provide all the faculty. University of Chicago should go to that local Illinois prison. Columbia University, we should go to Sing Sing. And Harvard, they should go to whatever they have. All of the universities should should give their faculty part time to teach in those places, and we should teach all those people we have in prison. I think the prison, the areas like in North Dakota, South Dakota, are filled with native people in the prison. Leonard Pelter should be let out, for example, Mr. Obama, and maybe Donald Trump. You wouldn't mind doing that, you know? Maybe maybe you get a casino out of it. Sorry, that's a bad joke. I know that's bad, dark humor, but you know, we should we should do that, and then you know, then show that we really do. We're sorry for how we've been treating you. You know, we should elect people who will understand that and do that and are brave enough to do that. We should. We will. We would if we all voted. If a hundred percent of us voted, and our votes could not be discounted in some tricks and thrown out in some computer tricks. We would all vote for sane people who would, we would be socialists also, definitely. We would have social, which is social security, which would be handsome enough for our old people and poor people. And we would, you know, we would have, we would have welfare, we would have food stamp, we would have, we would have, but we would do it in a way where we'd also be retraining and re-educating as much as possible because people prefer to be self, self-reliant, self of course. But there's nothing wrong if they've been like excluded in some way to take care of them. We should. They're human beings. They're wonderful people. We should take care of them. We have plenty of surplus for everyone. We should have Medicare for all, one single payer healthcare system. And you can still have private thing for the oligarchs. The wealthy people will still be wealthy. We should tax them. No tax cut. We should increase taxes on the upper class. Definitely by some percent, not no, you know, not punitively, but some percent. Increase the taxes. Increase the taxes on the corporations. Get out of this thing where you don't have to pay overseas. All the tricks they use. We could have, we hire all their tax lawyers to really make a thing they can't get out of. And we should cancel all student debt. All young people. Of all colors. We should accept all the DACA people and all the immigrants. Who are here at no fault of their own. And even the illegal ones, we should admire for having the initiative to come here. But maybe we should get them to enter a program in their home country, who, since they still have feet there. And no, no one who didn't grow up in that, some other country should be sent back to it because their parents were. But anybody who grew up in them, we could maybe put them, but then make a special accelerated program for them to immigrate legally. Because the fact that they made it here illegally is a sign of initiative. It's a sign of gutsiness, a sign of bravery. It's not a sign of them being criminal or whatever. They just are desperate and they came in. It should be a bravery thing. Okay? And we should embrace Canada and the, for their wonderful thing of, of acknowledging the first Americans in Nunavut. And we should, we should be against the oligarchs in Canada who want to deplete the Nunavut of their resources again. You know, the oil thing. And we should... We should embrace Mexico and Central America in a, in a bigger NAFTA that would be a good NAFTA. That wouldn't just be there to enrich the owners with cheap labor because we would have environmental rules in all the poorer countries of lower salaries. And we would be giving plenty of government support to our, to our own workers so they wouldn't feel deprived by jobs going there and regard jobs going to robots and they would relearn what to do. Or they would learn how to be... Uh, you know, do creative things without having the same old kind of like factory wage slave job. We can do we can do all of this. There will be millions of jobs created by going to renewable energy. We would study the Stanford program 
that has a way in which we, by 2025, every state in the union would have majority, it would be manufacturing uh, solar panels, wind wheels, thermal and engineer, geo, geothermal engineering, and, uh, and hydro engineering that doesn't destroy streams, but some good kind of hydro engineering. We have, they would be able to do that within seven, eight years, where we would, where oil would be not worth it to, to make a mess digging it out of the ground. And we would be self-reliant like Norway on renewable energy very easily. And, and then when they knew they couldn't do anything better, all the oligarchs, the oil baron oligarchs who are still the richest among us, they could invest in these solar panel things and still be wealthy producing things that were not damaging poorer people and the environment and animals and the environment. We can do all of this. If we're sane and sensible and follow science and so follow spirituality and follow Jesus, you're not following Jesus voting for people who are trying to destroy the U.S. government. Jesus doesn't want to destroy the U.S. government. He doesn't want people, a crooked president, who's like an economic, using the presidency to enrich himself and his family. Jesus doesn't want that. He says there was such a person was through the eye of a needle before they'll get into heaven with him, he says. And the militarists who want to go bomb someplace, through the eye of him, that's worse than through the eye of the needle. He's going to say, get thee gone, you evildoer, Jesus. What is this? Southern Baptist Convention. Wake up. Be spiritual. You know? So indigenous people means the Native American people who were here when the Euro-Americans and the African-Americans and the Latin Americans came here. And they should be honored. They are the first Americans. And we, we, our goal is to become indigenous, which we will never truly do. Subconsciously, we will feel like intruders, robbers, interlopers, because a human being is a basically an ethical being. Don't give me nonsense about mighty hunter and killer, savage killer and all that. Of course, we can become that. We have all too often done so. But basically, we are gentle. We're mammals. We nurse at the breast of our mothers. They kindly take care of the little creepy thing crawling up there and biting their nipples. And they, we are gentle beings and we're ethical. So when we live, we we're unethical and we're living in a way of intruding. When, we, when you can't do a title search in America and go back to Europe acre of land until you run into where it was stolen. We didn't realize you can't do that. But we could, be, if we become indigenous and realize that all resources are there to be shared and that we were graciously shared with by the indigenous people and we now should try to overcome and, and compensate for all our evil doing and we should pay back, then we would truly become indigenous. We would become attuned. The, the people in Houston who just pump oil and wreck and frack under Dallas, and frack Dallas, you know, and then poison the underground water resources under there stupidly where they're living on top of it. They would get attuned to it and they would never do that if they were tuned to the nature they're living on and in and as. And then we would truly be all indigenous and we would all be happy. We would have, we would not have this subconscious feeling of guilt and anxiety. And then we would again return to where we are a beacon for the world. And we would support truly democratic countries that are indigenous where they are and are not usurping other people and doing might makes right type of horrible stuff. And listening to the Sermon on the Mount and listening to Confucius's statements about truth and honesty and listening to the Hindu laws of Manu and listening to the, listen to the Buddhists and their tenfold path of skillful ethical evolutionary action and virtue and so on all the world traditions and judaism with its ethical following the ten commandments and so forth and islam which really is just the latest form of judaism if you really look at it clearly and christianity also all one thing no reason to any of them to fight with any of them So let's be indigenous on Indigenous People's Day. But it's not that easy, though. We can't just do it by saying so. We have to embrace 
the indigenous people. Share with them. Let them out of prison. Let the you know be like Pharaoh. Be, you know, you know. Let my people go. Listen to Moses. Let the let the slaves, the people in the prisons who used to be the slaves on the plantation, help them turn the prison into university, and let them be free in that place as they learn how to be free where they won't be attacked again and then defending themselves then get back into prison. We can't have the violence, of course. People who are dangerous to themselves and others, we can't. But that's a very small minority. All the people in there for drugs, just let them all out instantly, but come back to the classroom there. Because the big buildings, big bunch of useless buildings will be turned into classrooms. Maybe 10% of the people in the prison should be there. Not, not, not 90% should be let out. If we had really an honest government and honest media, 90%. The drug thing, and what are the other people slogging down whiskey and being alcoholics and being violent in the home and to themselves? You know, come on, they're a bunch of drug addicts, smokers, forget about it. Some guy took some crack because he didn't have a job and that's what they allowed to flow down the street in his street. Put him in jail and make him a slave for you, making license plates? Excuse me. There's nothing honest about it. Nothing just about it. It's pure abuse of the justice system. Okay. So, indigenous people, we love you. We should love you in action, which means you should do something, not just say it. Someday we hope to be indigenous too. All the best. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Columbus. In your present life, after all those people you killed in Haiti and Santo Domingo, I hope you're like paying that back somehow without roasting too hotly. Really, we, we don't wish anybody really to receive everything that they got. We don't mean it's that mechanical. Hopefully you'll develop an understanding and a sympathy and you'll, you'll be forgiven, actually, by the rebirth of all the people you killed. You don't have to kill more because you're so scared of what you did. Okay? So, we love you too. You were brave. You sailed out on that crappy little ship. You should have had a Chinese ship, 300 meters long, with a bunch of people rowing and steered by a bunch of intelligent eunuchs with a real compass and some gunpowder. And you would have had a much more comfortable ride. On Indigenous People's Day, I must speak up for the Tibetans, who are the indigenous people who inhabit with their special biology, physiology, nitric oxide production in their lungs and so forth, lung chemistry, can live with 45% of the, of the oxygen of sea level at, the, at two or three miles altitude. Uh, and they are the indigenous people on the Tibetan, the whole of the Tibetan plateau, not just the Tibetan autonomous region as it's called nowadays, but the whole of the plateau. And they've taken care of it and therefore the headwaters of the, all the rivers, the Yangtze, the Yellow River of China and that all those complex river complexes, the Mekong of Southeast Asia, the Irrawaddy of Burma, the Brahmaputra of Bengal and so forth, the Ganga and Yamuna of, of Central India, the Indus Valley of Western India and of Pakistan, all of those rivers and a few others that I didn't remember, they, uh, they take care of the headwaters of that. Traditionally, they keep the steppes green with their yaks. They don't overgraze them with the wrong kind of animal. They don't cut the primeval forest. And they are suffering under industrial, colonialist, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, oppression of indigenous people there. Just like we, Europe, but you know, you, my dear friends and beloved friends in China, don't feel bad that I'm calling you out here for oppressing the Tibetans, the Uyghurs and the Mongolians. Because, you know, I'm admitting we Euro-Americans are doing it to the blacks and the reds here in, here in, in the U.S. It's just the systems of this kind of industrial militarist systems do that, you know, and greed for resources and things. When people are, live in unethical and unsensible systems, this happens. And we're just, we can be just as guilty as you. In a way, we are guilty with you because we let you do it. You know, we don't defend the people, the freedom of the, of the indigenous people around the world. We don't because we're crushing them here. We crush them there. And you rightly say, how can you be righteous with us? So we're not righteous with you. What we're saying is that the indigenous Chinese people should not be colonialized and conquered by Brits or French or anybody in their day of so-called century of humiliation, or by Manchus for that matter, or by Mongolians for the Yuan dynasty or Manchus for the Qing dynasty. They shouldn't be oppressed 
Indigenous Chinese are beautiful, wonderful people. Confucius is a fantastic enlightened person. And Lao Tzu, oh my goodness, and so many great Buddhist masters. We love you, China. But your, your westernized, Marxist-dominated, sort of ideologically driven, materialist, industrial, militarist, and consumerist government should not be crushing indigenous people around itself. They can embrace them in a Chinese union if they're willing, but to crush them and dis exploit their, their lands and, and destroy their ecological balance and so forth, this not, should not be done. Like the Russian, like Brezhnev destroyed the Aral, the entire sea, the Aral Sea, in order to plant more crops of cotton, took the water out of the rivers. This is the destruction of indigenous people of the Aral Sea area, Sea of, sea of Azov, or whatever it's called, the Aral Sea. So, so indigenous people means that we, we, we need a world system where there's a world peacekeeping thing with the UN that is not dominated by the five biggest arms dealer on the planet, US, China, Britain, France, and Russia, you know, but the UN that is genuinely a democratic thing. And then di different indigenous people in different areas who know the ecology of their area, they should have the autonomy in their area, whatever the bureaucracy of whichever union they're in. And those unions should not have veto power over the basic peace function of the whole planet. And especially now that we have the cyber, cyber net, internet, connecting everybody mentally and media-wise. We have electronic, we have travel that connects us media-wise. You know, a nuclear explosion in one place will pollute every place. We are now a global community and we have to act like it. And the, and the key there is to re, re, reawaken our awareness of the indigenous people, such as the Tibetans, such as the Mongolians, such as the Buryat people, such as the native people in America, such as the different tribes in Africa. And we should honor them and let them control the use of their own lands and things like that in an intelligent way and live on renewable energy and in a modest and moderate manner. And it's time to do that. And so that's what we, so I must speak up. Any Bepazo, any Bepazo indigenous people, Rama, any Pepe, any Bechen, Bechen Bosete, any Ganga, Tia or Zamarda, any the Amdo Tankam, any Plateau Ling the Yongzolia, any Bepazo, the indigenous people, any Gami Desota, Ari Mi Desota, Gagami Desota, Sokbota, Mi Gangalos, any Kaji Desolia, any Ganga Bepazola. Today, it was Jabjoji God in the Pepeke, Ranze, Ranze, the Ragamari Lamsa, in the autonomy, Karsegri autonomy, Pepeke, Polar, Ganga, Jesha, Gonda, Jesha, Jesha, the pet goes, a broken Tibetan talk about it. His Holiness rightly says, I have broken Tibetan. So, autonomy within the People's Republic, which should become the EAU, the East Asian Union, like the European Union. And then all people locally autonomous, all 56 groups in China, Manchus included, Yi people included, and they all autonomous in their own regions, which you say in your constitution because you realize it's only logical. And then you don't have a problem anymore with Taiwan or Hong Kong. Everybody be happy. You'll be happy. Okay? So indigenous people r rule. 